So you join me at the start of Series 3, Episode 1 of The Bridge, and I'm just going to chat over this specially hacked down 15-minute version of the show, which hopefully won't get any kind of copyright strikes on YouTube. And I'm going to talk about all aspects of the theoretical framework, representation, audience, industry, and language. For language, we need to really think about representation, genre, and narrative. So here we are in the pre credit sequence, and we don't know exactly what's going on, but we know it is something bad. We get these very enigmatic dark shots, real signifiers of the crime genre, um, all very elliptical and vague, all hinting at dark things happening. But as an audience, we're struggling at this point to know exactly what. We have some work to do to make sense of the images that we are seeing. We're en route now to what we will uh, hear from Saga is the body disposal site again. It's night, it's dark, it's urban, it's all very, very uh, typical of the crime drama or, as we call it when it gets imported into the UK, the Nordic Noir Drama, CCTV. Again, typical signifier of the genre. And here come the two guys who've been dispatched to uh, find out, establish exactly why that light's been left on up there. Of course, they're going to come across this striking tableau which will kickstart the episode. Uh, and lurking there, what the hell indeed, we have the body of Hella Anchor. So, all so far, very, very typical of the crime drama. Here now come the um, opening credits, and one of the first things we see is Saga's signature Porsche, iconic within the programme, and part of the myth of Saga that this programme creates and builds throughout and we'll see that very quickly in the first shot of Saga as she rushes towards the body disposal site in her signature car. Very much going against, against stereotype in terms of gender and representations of femininity, but very, very typical of the genre for the key protagonist to be a police officer who is dedicated to the job, brilliant at the police procedural work, less brilliant when it comes to their own um, emotional and personal life. So Saga is an active character. We are literally positioned with her as she walks towards and travels towards the body disposal site. Again, everything typical of the genre. She's about to give her boss hands, of course, hands of course, uh, a call, and he's a little bit uh, tied up at the moment. But typical of Saga, she can't comprehend his inability not to be there, ready to do his job when she summons. Typical uh, examples of police procedural work here. She scans sites and back to the police station. Oh, lucky, uh, there is a parking spot just there. And again, a typical setting of the genre. We've gone from crime scene to police station, all part of the police procedural work that is so typical of this genre. Typical stock characters. Um, and then again, we're establishing who the body belongs to. Oh, shock, sister, her wife. That means she's a really? So we're uh, tapping into some key social issues here. Hans uh, telling a little white lie. Does this establish that we can't trust him, perhaps? And again, um, Saga struggling as part of her autism, her Asperger, uh, Asperger's, to come to terms with exactly what, um, what, he's, uh, what he's meaning. And so we're being laid information that will be key to uh, solving this crime over the course of the series, dropping little seeds such as the son Morton, the ex-husband, the fertility clinic, all things that are going to feed into the enigma around this particular murder. And also, of course, now um, those people on familiar terms with the bridge will know she needs a partner from across the other side in Norway, in Copenhagen. And at this point, she has Hannah Thompson, who is very much opposed to teaming up with Saga, still a bit of bad blood lingering from an early from the uh, earlier series. Here, of course, is the uh, best name in the character, of course, Lise Fries Anderson, another powerful female figure within the narrative, as you can see here, as she strides into her daughter's school and immediately takes charge of this conversation. Another powerful representation of femininity and this programme doing what police crime dramas do, giving us a range of characters from the beginning who we need to try and figure out what's their deal. Are they the one? Um, are they responsible for this? So Hannah and Saga um, 
odd couple, um, typical signifier of the uh, typical trope of the genre. And we saw sort of uh, Saga's eyes flickering left, right, and uh, forth there as well. Um, trying to keep up with the dialogue is a little, little bit tricky. And a little bit of representation of national identity here, the Swedes and their political correctness. Hannah, we're not really positioned to uh, warm to her that much. Good binary example of different um, representations of femininity here. Hannah, much more maternal. And Saga, of course, lacks that emotional intelligence. Um, Hannah, of course, also seemingly very much opposed to the political correctness that she uh, sees as endemic in uh, Sweden on that side, the Malmo side of the bridge. Interesting details about uh, Morton being uh, fed into us as well. Different approaches to maternity here, to uh, maternal feelings. Hannah, go to your child. Saga, um, Alexa, um, what do you tell someone who's just lost a child? Uh, giving us a very robotic, computerized uh, response. And um, that will take us then um, straight into um, another little bit of uh, tension between these two characters and another narrative strand. So a key a key phrase that you might want to use in discussing the bridge is the idea of the flexi narrative. Multiple narrative strands that will intersect and overlap and the audience have work to do to understand how these different narrative strands are going to come together. What's the relationship between Lise Fries, between Alexander who's just been dropped off uh, seemingly from prison? What's his deal? And um, other characters who are yet to emerge into the narrative. Lise Fries we're seeing here is quite a uh, in favour of kind of biblical vengeance. Will that mean, uh, does that make her prime suspect number one? And here they are now um, on the way, another typical signifier of genre from police station, crime station to police scene to home of a suspect, in this case, um, Morton, of course. And Saga attempting to uh, bridge the gap between her and Hannah. Um, she's read a manual on small talk and she's had a conversation with Martin in a previous series. Not very welcoming of Morton, who uh, I think is in there working on his uh, solo album uh, at the moment. Some weird off-kilter industrial noises. Um, I think Radiohead around Kid A, maybe a second Bon Iver, a third Bon Iver, bon Iver album. They've got some bad news. You've not got a record deal, Morton. Oh, also your mother's dead. Um, so Morton here. Takes it in his stride, uh, pretty much there. Okay, thanks. You know, not big deal. Um, he is very much being primed, like Lise Fries, as a, a another suspect in the drama. Typical character roles that we are seeing within a police drama. The iconic bridge, we keep uh, ref uh, re returning to that, of course. And now what have we got here? Another narrative strand being introduced. We, again, we don't know who this is yet. We don't know what his deal is. We don't know um, what's going on with him as he uh, you know, wipes the table in front of those two girls who may or may not be there, of course. Uh, this, it will be established, is Henrik. And um, he is on his way out somewhere. Again, all very enigmatic, um, very mysterious. The missus, um, wishing he'll uh, have some fun as he goes. All part of the perhaps postmodern, hyper real, uh, ambiguous nature of this show. And Henrik, uh, quick mover, uh, even without the 15 minute, ed minute edit, he's still a quick mover. A uh, quick discussion of art. Keep an eye on this chap, of course. Uh, may return later in the series. So, part of the flexi narrative um, that um, it keeps us guessing, it keeps us figuring out and puzzling how these things will overlap with each other. Worth remembering, of course, this is a key example of public service broadcasting, um, funded, um, joint funded by uh, the two uh, national broadcasters in Sweden and Denmark, and of course screened on BBC4, the niche channel um, in the UK, the Saturday night, 9pm slot that became established with international subtitle drama, very much for an intellectual ABC1 audience. And here we have another character, Lise Fries's Ricard, the male cleaner. Um, and um, here we have Lise Fries discussing uh, Judith Butler's theory of gender performativity. I'm going to say she's not a fan of it. 
um, and here she is doing her sort of uh, cape, um, her sort of vlogging bit. Saga quite happy to post a disrobe in the police station, not um, well drilled in social etiquette. As we know, this is all part of her her charm, her um, enigmatic nature as a character. As I said before, typical of the genre, very less typical of gender. So if you get a question on uh, representation of femininity, there's a lot of interesting things that you can say, of course, about Sag or about the contrast with uh, Hannah as another figure uh, figure in the show, and of course, Lise Fries Anderson, and another little uh, twist here, um, the scene of the crime, we have a link to Lise Fries, and no, I cannot say the word Lise Anderson without putting in the Fries, I think it should be compulsory that we all have little middle names that rhyme, to be honest. Again, the car is there, Sag is there, instinctively excellent at her job, key aspect of genre. So we can think about the audience watching this, BBC4 in the UK, subtitled drama. It was very popular. I think it got um, 1.8 million viewers, um, which is big for BBC4, uh, big for subtitled drama. This show did cross over towards a mainstream audience. In the promotional run uh, for this, um, the lead actress, whose name has uh, just briefly escaped me, did appear on This Morning being interviewed by uh, by Philip Schofield. So they did try to push this, widen this to a mainstream audience. And again, here's Alexander then, nighttime setting, typical of the Nordic noir, dreary, miserable. I live in Bolton, you know, I feel like I'm permanently in a Nordic noir, if I'm being honest. And again, who's this? What's the story here? We are left to figure this out as members of the audience. Alexander appears now to have joined the Fathers for Justice Brigade, uh, scaling the outside of the building. And another little mysterious um, narrative strand introduced here. Saga, back in the station, married to the job. Superb, superlative police officer, absolutely hapless human being. This is, you know, this is... The, the sort of thing we see with Sherlock, the sort of thing we'd see with protagonists in this genre all the time. Oh, Martin has come round. Um, he left some demo tapes there that he needs to retrieve. Um, some maybe some little drum loops that he that he, that he needs to add into his uh, latest demo. Now the record company have rejected him, and we're seeing here that Martin's grip on reality is a little bit tenuous, to say the least. So here we've got some, a bit of cross-cutting. Quite interestingly, we've got Saga at work and uh, Hans and Lillian having tea. Again, notice how, um, how dark it is, how gloomy it is. This is typical of this genre. Henrik, um, are you asleep? Still seems to be chatting to the wife. Very, very mysterious indeed, of course. Um, the power of uh, hallucination, grief, um, perhaps summoning the memory of his wife. Not strict realism. So think of that if um, if you get a question on Baudrillard, of course. So here they are, Hannah, uh, sorry, Saga is noticing that one of these uh, letters is particularly well written. Perhaps the work of Lise Fries Anderson, um, the narrative would seem to be suggesting to us. The tensions between these two um, really running deep. Hannah, of course, has has to be um, taken off the case. Saga is not for letting that happen, and oops, if only she had, um, R.I.P. Uh, Hannah's leg. Hashtag, you'll never walk alone, or you'll never walk again, anyway. Um, she'd asked to be reassigned, she didn't ask for her leg to be reassigned to um, not being part of her body. And here is, again, very, very typical of the genre, Saga's mum has appeared on the scene, uh, Saga sprints away, but the chaotic, troubled personal life of the lead detective in contrast with, juxtaposed with the uh, um, absolute expertise at the job. And this, of course, is very, very, you know, it's what I do uh, in any type of crisis. I try and rearrange the books on the shelf as well. Um, excuse me, Martin has gone busking. Oh, no, here he is rocking back and forth. He's took this rejection pretty badly. That knife we saw earlier. Um, he is clearly, of course, a disturbed individual and therefore being primed for us, perhaps a little bit too easily at this case, at this stage in the drama, as prime suspect in 
the case. And well, I have some uh, chocolate eclairs in my uh, glove compartment. Henrik seems to uh, run on something quite different. And shock, horror, little twist. Um, we didn't see this one coming. Henrik is a police officer and he is good. And he is weirdly thrilled about working with Saga Noren. So real twist, real enigma, real cliffhanger pulls us into the narrative and we will want to keep watching next week. So I hope all that has been of some use um, as you move toward the component two exam on the bridge. As Henry walks into distance, so do I.